Hello again. Sorry about that. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we're back with you. Basically, uh, the graphics card that I use is I use it on all. Yeah, I use all I use it on all devices. Um, the Nvidia graphics card, and um, for some reason, in the middle of our live stream, it's decided that it wants to do an up update. Um, I didn't ask it to do an update, so sorry, apologies for that. Hopefully, yeah, uh, yeah, hopefully you'll be back with us. Um, yeah, not a clue what that's all about. There's um, no updates due on the computers, so I've been using it this morning. So a bit of an untimely uh, thing. Uh, hopefully, it won't happen again during the live stream because that's rather irritating for everyone. Um, but yeah, we're we're still working on we're still working on our cow, and um, we're just working on shaping that nose again. I have no idea why that happened, so I'm just hoping that that won't happen again. So yeah, we're uh, we're just working on finishing it off basically, and then we're going to start working on other parts of the carving. Um, let us know, yeah, so, all looks as if it's back up and running again, but um, apologies that you've lost us like that, we were just getting into our, getting into our flow, so not what we, uh, not what we want is for it to just cut out like that on us, that's technology I'm afraid, so yeah, we, we the computer is, um, you're back. We are indeed. Yeah, apologies for that. It's the the computer decided what it is. We the computer uses a Nvidia graphics card, and it had an upgrade message on it. And um, I don't know if it's decided in the middle of everything. Hopefully, you won't lose us again. But I don't know if it's decided in the middle of everything to uh, do an upgrade. A bit frustrating, but that's technology. There we are. So we just finished off those little bits of detail and we got that angle on the face. It is. Glad you realised as quickly as you did. Yeah, basically, um, I shut it all down and, and turned it back on, back on again. Um, and I went and checked on the video and it didn't say that it was updating anything. So I don't know what that was all about, to be honest with you. Um, and in terms of, like, if they want to do an update, they can ask. You'd think it's been on the morning. That's it. Oh, there we are. It says the essential items have been updated. We don't have these problems with wood carving, see? Now, in the background, you may be able to hear Thomas Wood Carver. He's busy there. He's putting up a few new boards for us. My wife now, we're, we're doing. Um, she's got. She's had me working on um, different fridge magnets. So uh, he's putting up. He's putting up a modified fridge door to display everything on. So all we're doing here now, we're just shaping where our acorns are going to be. And I've changed the way that I do the acorn. It's from the carver's carving, which I need to dust a little bit. But here it is, where you use the, the lines like that. I've adopted that same style. So I like that one. So I thought, yeah, we'll do a similar, a similar style for our carving of our acorns. We're always learning. We're always developing. We always try different things. So hopefully the graphics card has now decided that everything is okay again, and uh, we can continue with our carving. So we're just shaping, rounding everything off, and. When we come back as well to the the carving itself, when we start looking at the uh, the design, you can see how we sort of shape everything. I just purchased my first Addis gouge. Oh, fantastic! eBay wins. Super excited, and we'll probably take it to use during the festival. Brilliant! Oh, fantastic! Oh, I hope that works out well for you because um, they do some lovely. Uh, they made some lovely gouges. You won't go far wrong with the, the Addis gouges. Fantastic steel, really good quality. 
we've used. That's the question. Do, do you know what it is? There's three I know of. There's an SJ Addis. There's a J, JD Addis, I think it is. And the final one then is um, Addis Senior. And I've only ever seen one Addis Senior for purchase. So uh, is it any of those three or is it a different one again? I think those are the only three that you'll come across. Now, I think it's also nice with this one, the way the carver's done it on the other one, to have a slight curve with those lines. So we're just going to put a few little lines, a few little markings on the, what they call it with an acorn, dude. Is it a cup? Yep. Yeah, so we put a few little lines just on the cup of the acorn. Just like so. And um, this cent centre portion of the carving is coming together quite nicely. Just another little one just there. Have to go carefully on that because we don't want to go and... Uh, lose the bit that we're actually carving out because that's easy done so you can see with this we're just using the stock cuts just to finish everything off but yeah when it comes to the designing again you're you're sort of working out how to fit everything together so the dragon is always a useful symbol because that can that can go top it can go middle sj abyss Number 15, uh, SJ Addis is the one that I'm most familiar with. Yeah, made some really nice gouges, SJ, SJ Addis. I, I think, I may be wrong on this, SJ Addis and uh, JD Addis, I think they were brothers and then Addis Senior, of course, then, then the father. So a proper family, uh, family company. So what I'm going to do now, we're also going to do a little bit of work, just shaping. Got to say as well, got to take a moment just to uh, address it as well. The uh, the wood, beautiful piece of wood um, for, for carving in. It's carved really, really nice, a sympathetic piece of wood for carving. There's a little, just a little bit there. Just to, makes it look a little bit odd, the carving, that's much better. Funny, isn't it? There was a tiny little lump. And it just made it look a little strange just on that nose. So we just remove it and um, sorts it out. As Dad was saying as well, it's good that we're able to accommodate people, you know, to do different styles, to do different designs. And when somebody has an idea, it's, it's good that we're able to do that. What we're finding at the moment is people are looking for bespoke love spoons. Hello again, Aubrey. Sorry about that. My computer decided to do, um, the graphics card decided to do some update. No idea why it decided to do that in the middle of my live stream. So I had all week to do that. I was using it earlier as well. And uh, typical, isn't it? When does it decide to do an update? Funny thing is, is because we're always doing, you know, things like the Windows updates and stuff like that. Um, but the, the graphics card, I've never known, I've never known the, the graphics card do an update like that. So a bit of a random thing. It's, I, I actually work at home. I work with a slightly, I've got the, uh, the, the PC is a bit more powerful, but this is the best for doing the live streams because it's the laptop and it's mobile. So you can move it around. For anyone as well, because I know you're, you're doing different carving and things like that. Any of you interested in that aspect of filming any of the stuff that you do, um, the setup we use, I use an Elgato Cam Link OBS Studio. Um, OBS Studio, uh, an Elgato Cam Link, and then you, I, I tend to use... Um, what do they call it? An Ethernet cable, isn't it? To go directly into our Wi-Fi. And the reason that I don't use uh, 4K for live streaming is because I'm. We've got fibre broadband here, but it's not the best. It's fibre to the box, and then it's copper wire from to the house. So it's not the strongest. So that's why I use the 1080p. But if yeah, if any of you are interested in doing live streaming, that's the setup that we use. Fantastic bit of kit, the Elgato Cam Link. 
So you can see we're just working around those hearts there. And I will admit that this piece here, we this was proving a little bit challenging on the scroll saw because it was that restricted movement as as we've mentioned previously. So we're going to go and have a look at our eternity sign. So one you'll have seen me demonstrating before. And it's creating that effect where it goes over and under that continuous continuous look to it. It's one of those things as well when it's, um, I know we're getting onto technical stuff with computer, but um, yeah, you can't really live stream if your graphics card is, uh, is doing an update. We come round the outside, so afterwards we just put that, almost like that border effect where we bevel all of the outsides. And um, we carry on doing that over and under effect on our eternity sign. With a spoon of this size as well, having a nice piece of wood for carving, that makes a big, big difference because you're going to be spending a decent amount of time working with it. And so you don't really want a piece of wood that's proven to be a bit of a challenge. This one, it came, uh, We what happened in terms of sourcing this wood, the one day we had uh, a telephone call from somebody, they were clearing the house. There's a very good YouTube channel called Primal Video that talks about all things that might make it to... Yeah, it's, um, oh, there's some really good... This YouTube is just a fantastic resource for all sorts of different things. I've learned all sorts of things that I never thought I would learn thanks to YouTube. I use YouTube as well, Aubrey, for um, things like Photoshop. So recently I've been learning a technique and we sell the photos then here in the shop where I take one of my photos and you use Photoshop and the layers to create, um, to turn it into a watercolour. Uh, my sister Michaela was here yesterday and she studied art and she actually explained the what they actually call it. So there's a specific name for the, the style that we finished with. Something about demonstrating ancient techniques and technology while using modern tech to record. Ah, yeah, yeah. That sounds very much what we do. Where we're using, you know, we're using our wood carving skills but we're, we're incorporating technology to be able to share it with everybody. When Dad started carving love spoons back in 1969, I don't think you'd have imagined that any of, uh, any of these different things would be possible. Could you have ever imagined that, you know, back in 1969, when you carved your first love spoon, what is Dad's just walked past? That you know you'd be we'd be able to broadcast the carving process with people in um, no all around the world. It's extraordinary, um, and we're really we're very very grateful to you all that um, that you join us and that we we can do that. And hopefully, yeah, hopefully it's interesting. Hopefully it's a bit of fun for you to see. So you can see we're just getting, there see we're working across the grain, but two things, we've got a good gouge and it is a sympathetic piece of wood. A little bit of chewing, just chewing a little bit, but nothing too significant, nothing that we can't clean up in the finishing. So again, turn it round in the vise and we're looking like we're well on with this top panel. Some of you may have caught, if you see what we're doing uh, as well on social media, you may have seen, um, we uploaded a, a photo of the Phoenix. Let us know, did you see the Phoenix, anybody else? Hello everyone again, hello Tommy. Apologies for that. My computer decided that it was gonna update the graphics card right in the middle of everything. I have no idea, I didn't even know it could do that, to be honest with you, because um, I hadn't given it permission to do it, and normally it's got to, with all the Windows updates, it's got to have my permission to update. So the one thing you can't really do much is anything to do with graphics, if your graphics card is updating. So a quick, it was a quick shutdown and reboot. Fairness to the computer did the job quite quickly of... Uh, of sorting that, that one out for me, so I can't complain too much. <laughs> right, so you can see we've got these different shapes 
starting to come together. We're getting that depth on the over and unders. Just starting to get that, create that effect where it sort of goes over and under, over and under. It's a nice design as well, the, the idea that they had. And going back, what we sort of try and work out then is where things are going to fit in most appropriately. So the hearts entwined together, that was the idea with them, is, is to have them as the sort of centre of the design. The acorns represent then, I do believe they represent children. So we wanted them together. Um, you saw the, the phoenix. Yeah, it came out, came out quite nicely, that one. Uh, I'm afraid to say it was one of my efforts again when I managed to completely underprice the job. Congratulations again to me. But there we are. I had fun doing it. And uh, I was a bit sad to see him go, actually. In some ways, if they'd have said that we changed our mind, I'd have quite gladly kept them on display here at the workshop because uh, I managed to do it too cheaply again. But there we are. You live and you learn. It was a nice job to do, something different. Wasn't our design originally, but it worked. The way it came about, there was a company sent us an email and said, do you know anyone who could make this? And without thinking about it, I just sent back saying, yeah, we can make that. And uh, they asked us for a price and it went from there. That's one thing I was talking, I think it was just before... Uh, our graphics card update interrupted everything. I was talking about um, time scale. Everybody seems at the moment, they want everything in a rush. I think people want things before Christmas and for, you know, for presents before Christmas, that sort of thing. Um, and so bespoke turnaround, I've been telling people, well, at the moment, you're talking January, um, the end of January, because... I always have to remember at Christmas, all going well, we go and see my wife's family. So that takes a little bit out of our schedule. But we're only, what have we got? October, November, December, um, January. But at the moment, that's a bit too long for most people for waiting, apparently. And the irony of that is that, of course, with the chip shortage, it's still a lot quicker than if you order a lot of other things, you know, cars and cars and cameras and things like that requiring microchips. The wait on a lot of those things is a lot longer from what I've seen. The microphone that I'm working with at the moment, I had to wait. It was, six, it was over six months I had to wait for that particular one. Because they were the not available. So you can see we're just going to bring that back up. Um, we will shape a little bit. My wife has just gone out, so we may have Nico joining us in a little bit. He'll be telling us all about his day in school. So you can see we're just shaping as we're going along there. Um, just rounding it all off. And it's nice seeing that wood coming through. It's a beautiful piece of wood. Really pleased with this one so far. The next bit of the carving that I think I will have a little look at. Ah, I just caught that there a little bit. Not to worry, just carve it back out. You get that with your carvings, as most of you will well know. You just have a little tiny slip and it puts a little line into another part of the carving. So we have to carve it a little bit deeper, take it all out. And on our merry way. I think this one as well is a very good example for the relationship with the wood. Now, on other pieces of wood, this carving would be um, 
a lot more, for want of a better word, stressful, uh, putting you under a bit more pressure. But because this one is carving well, famous last words, taking a chunk out of there, because it's carving well, it's just an, in, an enjoyable process to go through. So you're not really, uh, the wood itself is working with, with me very well. Now that one there, we'll turn that round, you'll see we'll sort that one back out. Once I go in at that angle, you won't even know that we nicked it a little bit. So we choose one, two, three, fourth choice for this gouge. It's just a bevel in and around there. Just trying to choose the right size that we're not going to catch the edge of that eternity sign. Just as we bevel that edge. I will also, on this love spoon, as always, we'll bevel all around the outsides as well. So we'll shape that part of it as we go in. One way as well, um, not so much on these ones. When we used to be doing the spoons, the one-offs, we'd have different methods for judging pro progress. Um, interested to know everybody else's thoughts on this. One method that we used to use to know whether we were getting close to the finish of any particular project would be the, the weight of it. So you'd start off with a, a block of wood and as, as it starts to get lighter then, you know, you'd reach a certain point then and you think, right, we're getting close now because you could feel it it would be significantly reducing in, in the weight. Interested to know with everybody else, you know, do you have little methods for telling, for assessing your progress in that way? It's a method that dad used to use a lot. You see, I can feel it getting light now. And when it start getting light, we use that as an indicator that the project was nearing completion. Right. One thing I've noticed on this one as well, I think it was myself, yeah, it was myself who stuck the design on. I'm afraid I didn't do a very good job of it because the design is coming off quite easily. The paper is peeling off a bit too easily. But no bad thing because that should reduce the amount of um, work that we have to do to take that paper off on the, the belt sander afterwards. But you've got to be careful if you don't get it at all right and that design comes off. Potentially it can cause you a few problems. So same again, just beveling that part. And I think what I'm going to just do, I'll just shape a little bit around the outsides. Most of the shaping I think is going to have to be done in the opposite direction. I'll just shape it a little bit. Yep, careful not to drop this one. This isn't the sort of spoon that I would be, uh, this is, well, this is the sort of spoon that I would worry if it drops because it's so big, it makes it a little bit vulnerable under its own weight. So I'm trying to make sure I've got it properly secured all the time. That's why we've got a few points to grip it when it's in the vise. We don't want it slipping about. Now I'm working now towards finishing the top panel. So that's a big chunk then. Once that top panel is done, that's a big part of the process done. We've had um, as well, recently, you may have noticed, we've had a few more requests than normal for mahogany spoons. So that's one that we're also working on at the moment. We've got the dragon, the entwined hearts, the daffodils, and the eternity sign. Quite a 
a very uh, Welsh sort of themed love spoon, that one there. So we're nearly there on that part. That one there, we're going to have to come back the other way. That's the way the grain wants to go. And right, we're well into this part of the surround. Let's just take a little bit off there. Afterwards, of course, we can sand everything back out. No tricks probably needs few. Uh, I sometimes have a hard time to find I'm done. No, it, it, it's... Yeah, it can be... It can be sort of challenging to know when enough is enough. Like, there are times when you just have to walk walk away from, from a carving. Sometimes as well, you can get yourself into trouble with the carving by continuing to fiddle with it and spending too much time on it. And sometimes we've had a, a carving where you'll be very worried about an issue, so something will be going wrong. Uh, not sure if you saw my comment before. Your feed dropped early, but yesterday I saw this girl with a t-shirt. Sorry, my dragon ate your you. <laughs> I have come across that one. Yes, I have come across that one. I missed your message, but I uh, I have come across that particular uh, particular one before. It's a popular popular one. Here in, here in Wales, I've seen a few times. So you can see, we're well on with that one. Yeah, um, there's a few, oh, hello there. I'm right, I'm, I'm afraid I can't read that, that particular one. Hello, thank you for joining us. Uh, we're just working on this particular spoon. We're well on with it. We're progressing and uh, Hopefully we're going to finish this one off fairly soon. I'm not sure if we'll get it done in the live stream. Yeah, when it comes to some carvings, that is that can be a real challenge, is knowing when you are at a point. Um, would be for goodness. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it is a it is a bit of a, a Scottish one because of course they do refer to it as a. I only recently found that out. They refer to it as a Scottish unicorn, of course. Um, I never realised until recently that the unicorn was associated with Scotland. I have no idea where that comes from. Um, the um, knowing when enough is enough that that can be a bit of a, a bit of a challenge when you're doing when you're doing the different carvings. So I'm just trying to get that last bit of paper off. Our eternity sign. We've got a little bit more work left on the hearts. And it's shaping up quite nicely. I was a bit concerned about the hearts because I took a little bit too much off. Shouldn't be telling you this, see? But there we are, we will share it with you. I took a little bit off the bit too much off the one side of the heart. Um, and so I was a bit concerned about that. that it was going to be a problem, but it's interesting the the carving it covers up a a multitude of sins when it comes to the preparation, or it may cause sins. So that, that can go one or two ways. But sometimes the carving covers up a few little mistakes that might have happened. And as well, we've got to remember that, that, that if Dad was here now, one thing he'd be emphasising is that it's an impression and it's, um, you know, it, it's it's hand carved at the end of the day. If you want something that is absolutely perfect, you know, and there's no variety, no variation in it, there's no little quirky bits, then that's machine stuff. Same can be said for the Irish and leprechauns. Yeah, absolutely. You mentioned before um, about the problem though when there's enough 
while making a ball in the cage. Yeah, now there we are. Now that is definitely one that when you're doing a ball in a cage, um, you, you've you definitely got to be uh, very conscious of when enough is enough. The first, here we are, I'll give you a background on this um, when it comes to the ball in a cage. The first time I did a ball in a cage, as you can imagine, you, you, you're developing, you're learning your carving. And um, as a love spoon carving, it's a traditional symbol to include on a love spoon. So it's a little challenge, you know, you, it's a bit of a, what's the, what's the word, write a passage. I know they call apprentice pieces and things like that. So the first time I had a go at doing a ball in a cage, um, I, I basically didn't know when enough was enough. And um, my ball fell out. <laughs> didn't do it again but it shows you you learn you learn and um, I took too much off the one side so I had a flat edge and then you start trying to shape it to cover it up and then before you know it Thomas Woodcarver dad walks past and he goes that's gonna fall out that and there's me saying no nah, no I'll be fine it'll be fine no it's okay he goes no it's too small it's gonna fall out and sure enough freed it from the solid and all of that time you'd spent Working away, whittling away, carving it out, and my ball fell on the floor. I lost my ball, but there we are. We didn't do it again. And then after that, I'd always sort of measure it out more accurately and be checking as I'm going more. And the problem as well when it comes to love spoons and things like um, seeds and links, we still do it the, the traditional way where you hand carve it all from the solid, from the one single solid piece. You'll see a lot of love spoons now that are available for less than 50 pounds and they've got links and seeds and things like this. And you see that. They're either a lot uh, better, better craftsmen than my, myself or uh, there's other manner and means that's being used to, to do some of these things. So we're on to now, we're on to the sheep. So a bit more, uh, bit more of the livestock and something we've carved before because of course we have the associations between whales and the sheep. What is it, nine million sheep? That's all you need is to love what you do. Yes, yeah, spot on, spot on, Lawrence. Thank you for joining us again after my uh, my computer cut me off, deciding to update the graphics card. I didn't even know it could do it, to be honest with you. So I gotta now figure out afterwards what actually happened there, because that's never happened before. Uh, yeah, you have. You've got to enjoy doing what you do. You've got to enjoy the process, enjoy the material, and as well, it's nice. I know the, the carver, for instance, you got coming up where um, you got an opportunity to share what you what you're doing, and you you got a bit of a I think a bit of a market coming up. And I always think that's a great opportunity if you can if you can share your enthusiasm. Um, I'm sure people come in here and think, oh that 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 man, he's a fantastic salesman, because um, you know I end up. It's like this morning I was talking to people about the things that we've made recently. I was I was explaining to them about a few of the scroll saw projects that I'd done for Christmas. And then and the next thing, they they were buying one of the items. And I'm thinking, no, I'm not telling you for for that reason. I was just I was just excited to share that, you know, it's we're not getting as many people in the workshop, and it was just nice to share what I'd been doing. And then the next thing they, they were buying it. And I, I I didn't tell you for that. And but they, they were delighted with it, but it's always nice. You know, so many things in the world, so many products, so many things that are available to be bought. It, it becomes so impersonal that as, as people making things, I think that's what you've got to remember. One of the most powerful sort of, um, one of those powerful things you have available to you in terms of sharing your work is your personal enthusiasm for it because that is something that with mass production they just can't do in they just can't do it in the same way they can't share any sort of passion they've got for it because it's been mass produced 
a bit less personal. Whenever I do these, one thing I always find is that, yeah, to a degree, you can call on experiences of, you know, previous ones that you've made. But I, I generally find that each and every carving then that you do is different to the last one. So I can't say that this sheep and the cow is anything like the other ones that I've ever carved. Um, this one's got long socks on, which is different. Gap and a bull hat. Bull. Or you 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 put me to the test now with me, with me Welsh. I know the happy the happiest parts. Have I just caught that there? No, not quite. The, yeah, the design that I've chosen for this one, see, because it's got the, I, I just thought it would be nice because I can add a little bit more detail. Um, so what I can do, see, I can put a sock onto there and a sock onto there. And then we got the hoof a little bit further down. A happy sheep and a happy cow. Right, now I'm with you. Thank you for explaining. Here we go. So we got, I'm thinking, da, da, that's the sheep. And how would you pronounce it? Buch. Because I tell you what's throwing me, there's what they call the Buch Mountain, which is down, which is between, where's the Buch Mountain? That was the, the, it was the thing in, in our family. There used to be an argument, apparently, in, in Dad's house growing up about the quickest route across the Bulk Mountain. So now I know. I'll have to ask him now. Is it the Bulk? Was it the... Was it Cow Mountain? When he comes in, I will ask him. So the same as we did with the... With the cow. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, I knew I was going to sneeze. There we are. Right. Yeah. As same as it was with the uh, with the with the cow. We're going to shape all of the body, but I want to create the effect that we've got um, that sort of woolly woolly jumper type effect on the on the sheep more. So I want a bit more texture. You can see we've got those two hind legs. The two well, the one hind leg and the one front front leg, but we we want to get those that sort of depth on them, so we're starting to push them back. Um, we're doing the same as we did with the cow, where we're shaping the face slightly, and then I got to have a little think about how we're going to create that texture. My Welsh is limited to Duolingo course. Well, it's further on than mine. If you'd have, if you'd have told me in Spanish, I'd have been up with that. See. Where, I, where we are, West Wales, Pembrokeshire here, they actually refer to it as Little England Beyond Wales. Now, Wales has changed a lot since I was in school because I did do, um, I did do Welsh, but the Welsh that we did was, I was at a very sort of basic level with it all. Um, but now they all do Welsh from a young age in school. So my sons now, they're Welsh. I know basic bits with it but I'm not not that brilliant now with this here we are Thomas Woodcarver's walked in somebody said about um Buch B-U-W-C-H yeah uh, it's all so it's all it is um and he was saying about it with um it's it's cow so you know the Bulf Mountain yeah the bull the bull mountain mm -hmm. the bull uh, I know. The Bulk Mountain. I was saying, wasn't there always an argument in your house about the quickest route over the Bulk Mountain? That's right, Back to yeah. my steg. Um, is that is that the name of it then? Is it over the Bulk? Is it is it basically Cow Mountain, or is it a different spelling? Because like I it. sounds like it. 
Would make sense, wouldn't it? Yeah. It's it's especially in Wales, isn't it? Because if it was a if it was a mountain where they they kept yeah, cattle, still, still but as well, if it if it is, if it was a mountain where they kept cattle, it would be significant in Wales because normally it would be sheep. Let's have a little look. The bull. This has been a lovely bit of wood for working. Is this the one we picked up? Picked up from those people on the on the way towards Carmarthen. Do you remember we went and picked it up? Piece of furniture. Very possible, yes. Yeah. Carved beautifully so far. So we're on the wheel. We're working on the wheel and the sheep. Of course, the wheel being a traditional. Um, something there. Did it go past? Up before when you said you didn't want sad. Ah. Look at that. I should be following more closely. Yeah, it's still a bit of a serious cow. A little bit of a frowny, frowny face on it, but um, before it looked a bit sad. I don't mind a serious cow. But we don't want, we don't want sad ones. So we just... Working now, the first thing I'm going to start working on is getting the depth on these legs. So we've got to push them back a little bit. And the same. Just as well what I'm thinking, there's simple little things. You know, this has been a, a lovely carving to do and straightforward, but it does show you when it comes to learning carving, there are so many little things. If you're a beginner and you haven't got the sort of experience and the the know-how with things, you can see how you can get into trouble sort of so easily. You know, if this was marked out with a, a cross grain or something like that, or with a difficult piece of wood, difficult grain, how different it would be then as a beginner, you know, doing a project like this. That's um, something then, because we're... Because we've been doing it a decent amount of time, um, you're making life easier for yourself because you're avoiding some of the pitfalls that can that can be uh, be present. That one as well. I think we need a little line in there. I don't know if I've just taken that out by accident. I'll turn it round and see how it's looking. Yeah, it definitely needs that line. So we got that line in like so, and that line just like so. And again, we're just bringing those legs down. Drop those legs down, get that depth on the carving. And as we go in, shape these bits in the stomach, same as we did with our cow, the bull. I should have known that as well, what Aubrey was saying, because of course, um, yeah, da da Davith is shepherd, isn't it? Right. Because a lot of people think David in Welsh is um, Davith, but it's not, it's Dewey. There was some Welsh folklore about a magic cow that produced enough milk for everyone so long as no one took more than they needed. One bucket. Ah. There's, a, there's all sorts of folklores and poetry and songs and all throughout Wales some fascinating fascinating history the myths and legends didn't we have a we used to have a book here didn't we the yeah, myths, and myths and legends of Wales well we've done our own book what's that well, book. did you do a book on myths and legends of Wales or are you talking about the book that she wrote? Well, yeah, Mum wrote a book. She's written a few children's books that are inspired by... Oh! There's the boy with the sword just turned up. It's a toy sword, don't worry, it's not real. Our school, Nico. Bye. Good, good. 
Yeah, Mum's written a, a few children's books. Be careful with this. She's just published a new one, and it's themed around Casteth Cork. There's one for you, Aubrey. Did you, have you visited Casteth Cork? As for the remaining animal, I'm not sure I trust a happy dragon. No, a happy dragon. Definitely wouldn't trust a hungry one. Yeah, Casteth Cork. And uh, just in last week, somebody actually asked us to... Um, uh, if we did any love spoons with Casted Cork on. And strangely enough, it's where Dad, he was born in the farmhouse below Casted Cork. And there we are. We had this love spoon already in the process of being made. So we showed it to them and they, yeah, they loved it. There we are. So we're just going to take off a little bit more depth here. Just shaping that as we go. So we're getting those different levels. So how was school today, Nico? You're busy playing in the in the sawdust there, are you? You're building up shapes. Ah, you're doing a sawdust road. So as we're going along, we're just getting all the different shapes. Hello! Oh, we got another. That's a rectangle. You say Sammy, rectangle, Sammy? Sammy? What were you talking about before? Here we are. So you can see we're just shaping, getting the depth okay. on these ones here. I will bring you the people. That's very awesome. Sammy said he Sammy said there was something called a drain drain. Do you that's a awful. drain drain? I am not familiar with a drain drain. We have heard of a drain, but not a drain drain. Mm -hmm. like so what did you? Drain. What did you boys? So what did you boys learn in school today? What did you learn in school today? What did you learn in school today, Sammy? And Nico, you learnt nothing. Well, there we are, another successful day. What did you learn, Sammy? Bangers. Wires. I thought you already knew what a wire was. Well, Castes Koch is the one, um, I just noticed Aubrey's comment. That, yeah, it's, um, it's what they call the fairy tale castle. And um, it's not far from Cardiff. The history Can I show on it. Them something with the sword? What's that? What do you want to show? Look, the camera's pointing there. What do you want to show? So. Look at that. You've taped it all up. Good stuff. There we go. A sword and a sheath. Very good, Nico. Yeah, Castle Court, quite close to um, Cardiff. And it's. The, the history on it is. Um, it, it was built by Lord Bute. I think he built it for his wife. She didn't like it, so it ended up as his hunting lodge. But a bit different to a lot of the other castles in Wales. It's not got the history. More like a Germanic style castle. But Mum wrote a few children's books based around it. You can see we're just shaping this border again as well as well as getting the basic shape of the wheel itself. And we go back around the other side, shaping that as we go. Just to let you know that a sword breaks too easily, that's why... You haven't broken your sword. No, I haven't, but it breaks easily. That's why there's tape on it. <laughs> ah. Trip, trip. Tritur Court. Do you know where that is? Tritur Court. Tritur Court. No. There we are. Well, that, well, we will have to have a little look. Whereabouts in Wales is that one? There's a lot of castles here in Wales, here, of course. But I, know, I don't know that one. Tritur Court. Oh, oh. 
So we've got a lot of this shape. I'm gonna, Nico, you're gonna have to do a job for me in a minute. You're gonna have to come in and you're gonna have to have a look and tell me what things I'm carving. Does, any, does anyone tell. realize about the thing that the case for the sharp bit of the sword is bigger than the sharp bit of That's the right. sword? That's right, why is it bigger? So one that can fit in. Spot on. Look, can you see? Very good. Can they see Here we are. Super. Can you see what I'm doing, Nico? Can you see what I'm doing? I'm just shaping the inside of there. What's that? What's that there? A bull. A bull? That's close enough. It's a cow. Right, a bull watch, is watch, a cow. watch the tripod. A bull is a cow. And what have we got? We show, I'll show you in a minute because it's quite a big spoon. It's quite a big spoon. There it is. So I'll show you in a minute and you can go through and tell me what the different things are. Okie doke. Now I'm going to sand the sheep just to see if we've got. The Green Man Festival is going to. On a, in a new. Ah, oh, wow. Tang at the time. Now let's have a little look. We've got the, that's all shaped. And what I'm gonna do, I wanna sand it so I can see how it's how it's coming on, how it's looking. So for instance, um, I feel that that needs to get a little bit more a little bit more depth in behind there. Need a smaller gouge to gouge that little bit out there. Tricky little bit just to take out, just to take out that little bit just there. That's better. Um, I sanded all of that down. I'm thinking with the sheep, if we get the eye just on there. Like I'm so. At, I'm having a look at the logos of all your comments. Can you see all the different ones? Yeah. So we got the eye just there, using the stop cuts, and I let that cut it out a little Why bit just to give it a bit more depth. Why most of the comments there are made by the same person? Because we've been having a chat with Aubrey, see? He's been teaching me a bit of Welsh. Oh dear, yeah, that, no, I reckon that's the handle that Gramps took off the fridge door that we're going to use for displaying the fridge magnets on. That's all right, that So it hasn't, it hasn't broken, Gramps has taken it off. So we're going to push that back ear down a little bit as well. Just like so. Um, I think that needs to come down. I think we need to change the angle so it sort of falls away a little bit more. Daddy, I Just think like there's a rainbow coming because I can see out there there's rain. Can you see sun and rain at the same time? Yeah. Google says it is near Crick Howell. <laughs> right, yeah. Maybe where the festival, yeah, sounds right. Sounds right. The, um... That is very interesting, actually. Um, with what you're saying, you, I know we, we had family links in that area as well. Um, on dad's side of the family. So the interesting you were saying about family links in that area, he had, yeah, when, when my brother looked at our family tree, we had family links in the, the Brecon, that sort of region. So let's have a little look. We're going to put those, going to put the hoofs on first. So the same as with the with the cow, we do that stop cut, one cut in, one cut back, one cut back, one cut in. Then we got same again, one and one, and then. Same again, one and one. We've got a smiley sheep. Our sheep definitely looks happier than our cow. 
got a serious cow and a smiling sheep. Right, and now what are you going to do? I'm back. You're back again? We're Daddy, just going to put... Daddy, I knew a good idea. What's your good you idea, Nico? For lots of people who like Simon Head, maybe they can see a love spoon of Simon Head. A Siren Head love spoon? Yeah. You can also send it on YouTube. Yeah. So we've got those little socks. So again, just cutting in a little bit of detail into those edges. Just like so, and then angle those back. Just like so. And then we got that angle back. I can. I can hear the rain, I can see the sun. I can see it pouring of rain and the sun. There we go. There we go. Granny has spotted a, a rainbow. Where? So we're just pushing oh, those back. We have a rainbow here. Shall we show, show everyone the rainbow? Oh, might be a bit tricky. We've got the camera set up this way, see? You know, we can point it to the other direction. So you can see we've got shaping that down like so. Daddy, a little bit like that. Yeah, so we got those angles for the legs, just like so. It's high drama here with a with a rainbow turning up. Right, there we go. That's coming on quite nicely. What I want to do though, I want to add a little bit of texture. So we're just going to add a little bit of texture to our sheet. Just trying to get that sort of a little bit more of a a texture as opposed to a smooth finish. I want more of a textured finish. There is two rainbows. Two rainbows? Yeah, one underneath, one above. There we go. So we've got a little bit of texture. Whoop. This little slip there. We have to go back over that now. Go. Two, I think that there. gives us. That's a beautiful rainbow. Yeah, there are two, one up there and one down. Yeah. Can you see two that? rainbows. Yeah. Oh, you should have your camera on you, Dave. There we go. Beautiful rainbow. Right. So, let's see what we can do. To finish off, can we get our rainbow in shot? We're going to have to cut that one off first. There we are. Cut the cable off there. And. Right. Daddy, Let's I turn it round. The rainbow's still lasting. There we go. I don't know whether it will. There we go. So, to finish off our live stream there, just pop over there. Open the door there. Here we go. Hopefully you can see that. It's almost like a well there was a double one there. <laughs> see down just down the bottom. To there. finish off, we got our rainbow. There we are. You say see you again soon to see everyone. See you again soon. Brilliant. There we are. And that one there. We just finish off by showing you how that spoon is progressing. So you can see we've got the There we are. So that's that's most of the spoon there. Well on its way. Making progress. Hopefully that's interesting. Hopefully it's useful. Uh, let us know any comments, any questions, or anything like that you've got. Um, thanks for joining us. I can see the double. And yeah. please yell double rainbow. <laughs> You shout double rainbow, Nico. Double rainbow. There he is. Thanks again. 
And thank you for persevering after our little I, technical I issue too. Nico's going off to see if he can find a crock of gold now at the end of it. That's it. Nico's That's off to find that pot of gold. Thanks again. Hope you all have a good week.